Welcome to the Backward Pathway Model. Today, I wanna to talk about how you're designing your CTE program so they better align with the job market in your community. I know you are performing community labor analysis in your communities, in your schools, to make sure you have jobs for your students and you're analyzing your program so that students are gaining the skills, credentials, and requirements for those jobs. But how do you know that process is really working for the student? I want you to look beyond the jobs in your community today and imagine tomorrow. Let's see if we can give your students a better look into their futures and their careers. My name is Diane Ross and I'm the Education Development Manager here at RealityWorks. I have a master's in education from Marshall University in secondary education and I've been with RealityWorks for about nine years and have really spent a great deal of time observing and researching CTE programs across the nation. Today, I'll share with you some of my insights. I welcome any feedback you have, and you can reach me at my email address above, diane.ross at realityworks.com. And I'll, do, I'll give you this email again at the end. I'm calling today's webinar, Creating a Backward Pathway Model. I call it that because it's a different way of comparing your job market with your programs to your students. I was inspired after talking with several educators who are faced with giving students more time learning skills with less time in clinical type situations from being in hospitals with patients to being on farms with animals to being in daycares with children to get time in welding facilities to actually weld. So we're going to discuss today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Reality Works, uh, education rethinking, the case for the backward pathway model, and how backward learning can accelerate your programs. So Reality Works has, uh, our simulation technology has been used around the world for more than 20 years since the creation of the Real Care Baby Infant sim Simulator. Today, we're in 62% of school districts in the U.S. and 90 countries around the world. We strive to partner with educators and educational leaders, and our company president is a board member of the Association for Career and Tech Education, as well as chair of the Industry Workforce Needs Coalition. Our products are developed with hands-on learning in mind from our Real Care Baby to our new welding and ag programs to our award-winning health science products like ECG or auscultation training. We help students create lasting educational and experiential learning experiences. And we're in four of the career paths in facts, health science, agriculture, and welding and trade skills, specifically electrical. So let's get going here and talk a little bit about what is the guided pathways model. You may have heard of this before. Its goal is to give students a true path toward a viable career, no matter where they live, by addressing inequities and in educational opportunity. What this means is we need to really pay attention to what we are offering to students in regard to programs and make sure they align with the jobs available there in your community. This is probably what you're doing now when you perform your community labor analysis. And we wanna take this just a little step further. What is a modern student? What are some of the characteristics you want to instill in a modern stu student slash modern learner. First thing that comes to mind is they are leaders in their own learning. They're going to ask why they are learning this. This may already uh, look, they may have already looked at jobs they want and talked to people who have those jobs. This is a good thing, by the way, and they have some idea of what's expected. Secondly, this one is probably driving you crazy. They are questioning everything, probably starting sentences with, why am I learning this? And third, inner motivation and self-discipline. This is one you'll need to encourage and help them with. You want to motivate them to reach beyond just getting a job, but choosing a career ladder and instill in them the discipline to follow that path upward. That is what we'll discuss today, pushing them upward in their career paths. In the traditional CTE model, 
Let's say you perform the labor market analysis and find what jobs are needed and present that in your community. Then you go back to your catalog of programs and work to align those existing programs to meet the needs of your students. But you aren't really looking into exactly what that career entails or what they'll be doing in that career trajectory. The student takes the class, but depending on the expertise of the teacher or the veracity of the curriculum, they may or may not develop the skills to perform the job needed. This traditional CTE model is a siloed approach that they fail to affect the student's entire career journey. They aren't prepared for today and they won't be prepared for tomorrow. The trouble with this siloed approach is that the student may have several career interests. She may think that college could help her build a great future, but she just isn't sure what direction she should go. And she may not be left with many choices. She could live in a rural community that would require her to leave home to attend school, which would cost her or her family money that they just don't have. The other issue with the siloed approach is that the student may not be exposed to different career options and career paths early enough to have the information needed to make decisions about possible careers. Plus, even if they are exposed to differing career paths, they may not get true experience of any career to understand where it might lead. Middle school programs that do more than just research careers can allow students to experience, perhaps with simulation and some field trips, what it's like to be in those roles and where they can take them if they choose to continue that path. The traditional pathway model sometimes starts with the teacher here on the right, then is evaluated by the district. It might look like this. You have a teacher who's taught a program or perhaps even a pathway for years. That teacher may or may not be certified in the program. That teacher may or not have industry experience. And the teacher is, is required to follow state approved curriculum. That teacher probably does not track students into their next steps in their career choice. The district, on the other hand, gets with the workforce board to get community job needs data. Then the district uses that data to plan and evaluate programs next, the next year. Once they do that, they have to find qualified teachers for new programs or find new teachers that have certifications or experience from industry. The district has to secure funding for the class and for any skills lab settings. And the district may have to purchase curriculum so that it better aligns with certifications and meets with state standards. When you look at this model, what's missing to you? Oh, well, they're right there. Yep, the student. We've left them out. So what is a backward pathway model and how is the student um, involved in that. The backward pathway model first looks at the student and looks at their personal interests. Then it compares the student's interests with the student's aptitude. Can they be successful in this? And then this assessment will allow the student to know if they can actually do this career. So it gives the student direction. What do I need to know for entry? What's the career trajectory for this career? And what do I need to learn for this career? And what are my personal goals? How will those align? Will I want to live independently or with my parents for the rest of my life? Let's hope not. Buy a house, get married, own a car. And then what's my projected income at each stage? Because am I gonna get married, have children? Do I need to go to college? And if I do go to college, can I do that while I'm working? The other issue with the traditional model is that we may not have the expertise to offer those programs. And as a result, students are either forced to leave their communities, go to school that doesn't off, that does offer the program or they just don't complete it. It turns out to be a lose-lose. For instance, in high school, a student, perhaps she isn't exposed to career or college option and may take the dual enrollment courses offered, but they don't align with her interests. Then in community college, she's advised piecemeal, perhaps for courses from semester to semester without regard to what job she could pursue. She ends up 
with an education, but not ready to take on a career path that's available in her community. This is where the backward pathway approach can help. It allows a student and your community to look at the job market right there where you live or close by, then create programs that align with those jobs. The other way around may not get a student the training or education they really need for that specific job in your community. I call this a backward pathway model because the progression starts with the student and marries that concept with the requirements for the career choices. This model includes the labor market analysis so that students are offered career paths that lead to jobs in their communities, but it goes one step further by providing information to students about how to get there, what exact steps they need to take and where they can um, make informed choices about stepping out beyond the career choices there in their community. It's a much more broad view of the world, allowing students to make informed choices and have experiences that help them to make those choices. As a side note, most students who start a community college do not earn any post-secondary credential, let alone a bachelor's degree. The biggest reason for this is that the student loses sight of their own future in a community college as programs focus on a different agenda sometimes. In many cases, the student is unprepared for community college and may not understand or see a clear path. Instead, let's look at the backward math again. So map again, the backward map being widely recognized as a better model for students, especially rural students who don't have access to higher ed, namely community college is gaining some traction. This model first looks at the job market, like we said, in your community, marries the education necessary, then allows students to see into their futures. The student gets more exposure to more vast and expansive and rewarding careers. It allows the students to be exposed and learn about a lot of different careers in the world. In high school, the student could be exposed to experiential learning using high quality simulation to really see and understand some pretty difficult skills needed for specific areas and good paying jobs. By the time they get to, let's say, community college, they have a good idea of what they want to do, and there's a plan that's devised to get them to the next step of their career. So some of the steps is to innovate at scale rather than through targeted programs, establish new practices that affect all students, creates and sustains momentum, develop and sustain innovations at scale requires changing the mindsets of faculty, staff, and partners. So rather than just teaching what you've taught for the last 20 years, look at what you need to teach and do you, and then uh, evaluate your programs, whether they are meeting the needs of both the student and the labor market. Implementing cross-sector pathways at scale requires community colleges to move from transactional relationships to transformational relationships, focused on win-wins for the colleges and external partners. So some of the steps might be to organize programs by field and backward map to good jobs. So you have a healthcare, what are the jobs there? And then what are the jobs that are out in the world? Redesign student onboarding, you know, have a, so that they have a better understanding of where they're going, what the trajectory is. Reorganize advising and counseling. I think this is very important is to have a clear understanding from your advising and counseling staff to the student and spend a lot of time with the student so that they best understand where they're going with this. And the next one is what you can do in your school right now to motivate students toward viable careers. And that is integrate active and experiential learning throughout your programs. You might be asking why should I integrate experiential learning throughout my programs. I've heard from several schools they're being required to increase the clinical experience through simulation. Some as much as 30% more time doing clinicals and using experiential learning, otherwise known as simulation. By increasing simulated time learning, students not only increase their skills, 
but also gain new and fresh perspective on their career choice. They may not have access to specific jobs or know about these types of jobs, but through simulation, they're exposed to possibility and at the same time, gain valuable skills that will push them further into their careers. So how could this look in your school or your district? We'll take a look at four of the areas, the four areas that RealityWorks uh, we have focused on. We find these to be of the most viable career choices as well. So health science. So why would I start with health science? Well, according to the Labor Department, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, this is just came out this year, employment and healthcare occupations is projected to grow 16% from 2020, year before last, to 2030, much faster than the average for all occupations, adding about 2.6 million new jobs. Healthcare occupations are projected to add more jobs than any of the other occupational groups. This projected growth is mainly due to an aging population, leading to greater demand for healthcare services for the elderly. The median annual wage for this is somewhere between uh, 70,000 down to about $42,000, depending on what your skills are and your education. Healthcare careers range from sports medicine or athletic trainers to EMTs, paramedics, to uh, medical assisting, certified nursing assistants, phlebotomists, veterinary techs, and the list just goes on. Meaning students have to be exposed to and experience all kinds of careers under that huge umbrella in order to see an engaging and clear life path. Employers tell us that the important skills necessary in health sciences are problem solving and critical analysis. How do we help students to both engage deeply in the profession and see what's necessary, needed, and develop the process skills needed? The best way to do this is to provide the right skills resources to your classroom. Provide skills that challenge the student to want to learn and master the skills. They can't do that by practicing on each other. They need the skills practice in a professional medical setting and simulation will allow students to do just that. Our auscultation trainer won the 2021 EdTech Breakthrough Award for the Career Readiness Solution of the Year. The auscultation trainer allows students to properly hear and assess heart, lung, and bowel sounds by palpating the real-to-life mannequin and navigating to the proper points. One of the challenges is that students would only get to hear the sounds of each other. Some students are uncomfortable at first palpating or touching each other or having it done to them. So this is a much more complex skill that these students can develop with these, these kinds of trainers. Another award winner, winner of both an EdTech Cool Tool and an Edison Award and a trainer that schools are investing in is our ECG simulator. With this trainer, students learn proper lead placement for three, four, five, and 12 lead systems. Uh, students also learn in a safe environment by not practicing on each other, allows them to hear normal and abnormal realistic sounds and that they learn how to recognize and name. Rhythms are displayed both on the tablet screen and in hard copy. They can practice, be assessed. The ECG simulator can be used to prepare for the EKG technician exam as well. And so they are um, exposed, like I said, to normal and abnormal rhythms, learn how to read the rhythms on the included tablet. One of the key facts from the US Bureau of Labor indicated an emphasis will be on the care of the elderly due to an aging population. This is a virtual look at how our tools might be used in your classroom. You can create a simulated skills lab to give students the time they need to master each skill. By setting up stations as seen in this virtual look, students can work in teams or alone to practice skills, then be assessed. We offer pathway packages designed to simulate real life skills in our certified nursing assistant package, 
which focuses on elder care. We also include everything from mannequins that help train students for CPR to blood pressure simulation to geriatric simulation that delves into what it's like to be elderly and the issues that come with it, such as eye disease, hearing decline, dementia. We have a simulation that actually simulates dementia and arthritis. We have packages that many schools have asked us to put together and we do custom packages as well because our goal is to make sure that you get what you need. Remember, most of your students have never seen or experienced these new skills being taught. Give students ample time to practice and continuously assess their work so they can be more confident in their skills and so they are better prepared for clinical assessments. Create an open environment so that students can learn. The skills lab is the place where students have the opportunity to overcome their fears and insecurities while working with a variety of task trainers and simulators. By using these vital simulated tools, students have the opportunity to practice safely without harm to patients. The primary goal of the nursing skills lab is to provide an environment for students to become competent with their nursing skills and to become a safe practitioner while working toward excellence in nursing. Your job is to give them the tools necessary to make that happen. Move now to agriculture. Interesting about agriculture, according to the USDA, the number of farms in the US has declined over the years. <clears throat> After peaking in 1935 with 6.8 million farms, in 2020, there were a little over 2 million farms, but Technological developments in ag have been influential in driving changes in the farm sector. Innovations in animal and crop genetics, chemical equipment, and farm organization have enabled continuing output growth without adding much to inputs. As a result, even as the amount of land and labor used in farming declined, total farm output nearly tripled between 1948 and about five years ago. Look at Ag is a hot career right now. Gross cash farm income, which is annual income before expenses and cash receipts, um, is forecast at $488 billion last year is what it's forecast, which will come out soon, versus $348 billion in 2001. With the increase across time largely due to higher cash receipts, if forecasts are realized, it would increase 6.2% in 2021. That's the highest it's been since 2014. So it is going up. Ag is a hot career. Cows and hogs are hot careers. Um, the, the receipts for animal and animal products totaled $165 billion in 2020. <clears throat> for cattle and calf alone, 38.2 um, dairy. Receipts were about 25% and poultry and eggs about 21.5. So with all that data in your hands, how do you prepare students for these kinds of lucrative jobs that may or may not exist in your community yet? Let's say your students live primarily in urban areas and you have little access to farms, farm animals, even large fields. How can you better expose students to the vast wonders of careers in agriculture? There is a movement in this country for sustainable farming to make our food sources healthier for our bodies. Students embrace the concept by focusing on a specific area of agriculture education, but in many schools that's defined by the courses offered and confined by the lack of resources for students to experience valuable skills. Not only does the health of our livestock like cows affect our, wealth, our healthy living, it also affects the food we grow, the runoff from the farms into drinking water, proper use of water to preserve that resource, and it goes on and on. In a backward pathway model, students would be exposed to a variety of career paths, such as the breeding of cattle. Through simulation, students can learn how to judge whether a cow is ready for calving, then they can learn. They can learn how to take and read an ultrasound for cattle. Students learn what to look for, what's good, what might be trouble, then evaluate next steps 
employing critical thinking skills and evaluating their interest in a given field of study. In many countries, student training on skills with live animals, this is for artificial insemination, is outlawed. It's prohibited for humane reasons. By allowing students to first be exposed to the concept, then be allowed to develop practice, then be assessed on these skills, we create better conditions overall for the health of our food sources. With our bovine birthing and ultrasound simulators, students get hands-on learning by conducting a bovine ultrasound and ultrasounds using our ultrasound tablet. Students can practice and then be assessed on their skills in reading ultrasounds and working out difficult situations that commonly happen. The ultrasound simulator simulates 14 uh, ultrasound situations from bovine pregnancy to various situations that can arise. Students use critical thinking skills to assess what they should do next guided by our curriculum. They get that full uh, experience when they practice actually birthing the calf as well with a real to life looking um, calf. Artificial insemin insemination is key to creating and maintaining a healthy herd. Students learn the proper technique for artificially inseminating a cow through correct cervix manipulation. The breeder allows students to first see into the reproductive tract to better understand and identify reproductive landmarks. Then students learn and practice inserting and delivering the semen. This is a life-size model that fits on a tabletop and can be folded down. Here's what one teacher told us about the bovine breeder. This teacher has been using this product for the past two years. The breeder comes with lessons that can be used by all uh, by themselves or supplement lessons in an existing unit that you already have. The videos, PowerPoints, and guides are very helpful to the students. I've used the breeder for two years now in my classroom and all students have benefited from it. The breeder allows novice students to learn and experience keep updated on artificial insemination. Living here isn't always easy to get to a farm because of weather or farmers' prior commitments. With bovine breeder, you can work it into your classroom schedule anytime. The bovine breeder has traveled around the state. We demonstrated it at the state capitol during CTE month. It was part of the interactive display there at the fair and several other agriculture programs have borrowed it to use in their classrooms. It's a big hit. You can integrate bovine simulators that will help students to develop skills in ag while helping them to develop a sense of direction in their career path. I mentioned earlier that hogs are also a hot career area now from learning to inseminate learning to inseminate a sow to birthing piglets to processing the piglets when they are born. We offer simulators that are designed to give students a true life experience while maintaining that level of humane learning. By allowing students to experience these skills in a simulated environment, they can better understand the real world and what they're actually doing when they get to visit a farm. When it comes to plant-based foods in farming, the USDA says there are about 74 million farms in the US taking up 4.4 million acres for just under 20 billion Yes, that's billion dollars in sales. Just over the past four years, there's been a $2.7 billion increase in sales from vegetable production. Growing food is a hot career choice right now. Restaurants and grocery stores are going higher end when it comes to plant-based food. For students and for teaching, space is always a consideration. Having the acres to grow food in schools is challenging, plus schools is scheduled during um, most non-growing seasons. Hydroponics allows students to both grow nutritious foods, but also experiment with various nutrients to see the effects. Students can also set up a store to sell foods, farmer's market style, provide vegetables to your lunch program, catering. Moving on to family and consumer sciences now. Let's look at this, childcare, that is, is a hot career right now. In fact, the lack of adequate and affordable childcare has helped to increase the number of working mothers leaving the workforce, adding to a worker shortage. The childcare services industry is still down about 126,000 workers. 
more than a 10% decline from pan pre-pandemic levels. Labor Department data shows while many industries rather complain they can't find enough workers, the hiring situation is more dire in childcare than in restaurants right now. The chart here shows how much each sector is down compared to February of last, of year before last, 2020. After a big decline, restaurants have rebounded to 92% of pre-pandemic staffing levels. Childcare is still below 88%. There are several factors that go into the why of this, and some are being addressed by government programs aimed at raising pay uh, by providing more re relief to parents to use uh, for child care centers. This child care crisis, per se, affects not only child care centers, but it affects the entire working population as more parents are opting not to work and staying home to care for their children. The need for child care is, in a way, driving our economy. Preparing students for real careers, especially with regulations and rules that are complicated need special education and special training. For instance, learning how to create, design, and maintain a child care center for a specific age group is vital for this career. Students need to learn things like what materials and equipment that need to fit in spaces. How to best use permanent room fixtures like sinks, appropriate furniture for each learning center, and assigning noise level to each learning center, keeping low levels down in, in the same areas and high levels together. All regulations and recommendations for a quality child care center, things we don't think about. How can students learn that in your classroom? By creating and designing their own centers. This is good for different age groups. This came from one of our teachers in Montana who didn't have child care center in her school. She used the child care design care center to teach her students the elements necessary to create a child care center. She said, the goal of my program is to introduce students to the idea that early child care is a viable career option. I want to give them a jumping off point so they have some idea what the job looks like and they can hit the ground running to enter the field. These tools were an easy way to offer those learning opportunities packaged and ready to go. And the key to any child care center is proper care of children, especially newborns. Real care baby allows students to learn and understand the complex needs of an, in, of an infant. Students can take the baby home and care for it over a weekend as they would a child under their care in a daycare. Real care baby simulators allow students to develop and master skills necessary for a career in child care from newborn to shaken baby prevention, as well as fetal alcohol syndrome or drug addicted babies to preemies to toddlers and choking. Simulation allows students to work in a safe environment to really learn. Using simulation allows students to build skill in caring uh, plus, student gets a score, and the programs point out what the student is doing wrong, from shaken baby syndrome to fetal alcohol and all the others. Um, it, it leads to rewarding jobs. Plus, real care babies take up a lot of space. We have storage options even for um, to organize your classroom better. We're also in culinary. Um, the other need we have is food workers, from chefs to wait staff and restaurants. We have culinary bundles designed to complement any culinary or food program or even a food truck design. Bax programs that offer lifespan courses such as caring for the elderly can enhance your program with our geriatric packages that include geriatric simulation, which allows students to experience what it's like to be elderly in order to better develop empathy skills. Another aspect we need to concentrate on as educators is the soft skills. Students will come to you with varying levels of these skills. The skills can be acquired through observation, reading, teaching, training, experience, practice, uh, but we are emphasizing them as much as we do the hard skills such as procedures. Uh, widening gap is being noticed between the expectation of companies during the employment process and the performance of the job applicants in the area of soft skills. Soft skills not only enhance 
employability for candidates, but they contribute to the company's success. I've given you some ideas and thoughts for creating your own backward pathway there in your school district. Back, backward pathway model starts with the needs and interests of the student, allows them to make good choices, not just choices that you provide, but opens their eyes and world to what's out there. Then the model allows you to align what offerings you have with labor needs, but it also extends or broadens that, for instance, Perhaps your community needs certified nursing assistants. You wanna get students ready for those jobs, but at the same time, let them see what they can progress into, nurses or other specialty healthcare careers. It gives that student a vision for the future, a vision based on how to move up, get more education and training, perhaps even on the job and make more money as they progress through their lives. I want to thank you for your time today. We can take some questions now and never hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or need other information. Here's my email address. It's diane, D-I-A-N-E dot Ross, R-O-S-S -S, at realityworks.com.